Good morning, everyone. In today's video, I will continue uh, what I started talking about yesterday in points in Dynamo in lesson eight. And today in lesson nine, I will uh, continue on the same topic. And I'd uh, prefer, before I jump to explain the rest of uh, available two options in uh, you know cylindrical and spherical uh, point systems, I wanted to show you some real life examples and something beneficial and practical out of making uh, or out of understanding or previous understanding for the Cartesian system uh, for the points that has, uh, you know, an X and Y and Z. So that's a good opportunity for me to, uh, you know, because I asked you last time to you know, directly connect the start point and end point and have a go and experience how you change and update, you know, the slider. And for those who don't know, we have two types of slider. If, if, if you want, uh, just have a quick look on it before. If there is someone who doesn't understand how they work, we have a slider, a numerical one, an integer one. And this one goes with, uh, you know, the ability to provide uh, points. And this one is just a whole numbers. Uh, again, if you open any one of them, you're gonna see that they have minimum value and that's a maximum value and then the steps so each time you move your hand will increase by you know whatever step you provided and that's the maximum 20 and that's the minimum anyway so i ask you to connect it directly and exercise the use of points by x and y and z now let's have a different type of dealing with uh, numbers and it's a mathematical one to create range the range is really important as it's a start, have a start value, end value, and have a step. So if I want to start from zero and then end up to five, is stepping uh, each one, and the result of the sequence, sorry, the resulted here is a sequence, which is a group of series of number, as a range starting from zero, which will be considered as a value, and ending with five as a value, and that will be six, yes. Uh, it's always a misconception for us in the beginning to understand that zero is count as a number. So you have from zero. So if you count those, you're going to find them six, not five, even though you start up from zero, ending up with five, thinking that you're going to have five elements. So no, because zero is considered as a whole uh, integer and you have to consider it as a resulted value for you. So you're going to have six in this case. That's uh, beautiful because again, the steps between, you know, each one of them will be one, which is the default value, have no meaning to add it. If you cancel it, the result will be, you know, will be the same. Now let's go ahead and have 10. And in this case, I will add that to make it two and add the steps. So see, without the steps, it automatically, I'm setting the executing button, execution button to automatic. And that's why you're going to see its default value to step by one. If you add a different value in here too, it's going to step and jump each two. Now, what's that mean if we want to, you know, test that in an array or in a, in a point to make an array? So let's have our first uh, shot or our first look at the linear array. In the linear array here, which is the first uh, practical example we're going to test today, is you know how to make a distribution of the same element in here point because usually or 90 percent point will control the placement of element later on whether in dynamo or rivet so it's a good idea to exercise and excel in this before so let's see that's the single point if you have an x uh, and the x is actually a range from zero to nine to 10, and the rest are zero, zero. So you're gonna see that there is a linear array of points generated from zero and ending up by 10. And if you count them, you have to find one, two, three, four, five, six elements. So this is what we call it, you know, range. Uh, if I cut this one out and take you to understand the other, you know, uh, the other method of creating, you know, uh, series of number or sequence is what we call a sequence in here and the difference is that we have a start value we don't know you know the end of amount but instead we have you know an amount of how many number we are will be jumping so we're gonna have five jumps or five numbers so I'm gonna connect that and if I activate this you're gonna have only five jumps because you say that I need five numbers or five values and the default value is one and if I go if I want to go 10 
you will see that goes from 0 to 9 not to 10 itself because 0 is actually counted if you want to if you want the way the normal way that we used to have to start up from 1 not from 0 and again you see the listing generated there is zero as a first element which is already booked as an index for the first value not as one so it's a good idea to deal with the concept of a zero and try to understand it now if i say two in the steps here we see a big difference so you're going to see that that the sequence is jumping each two this time getting us to end up well the 10th value is 18 if you you know do the math in here and the same thing if you connect that it will create for you a linear array now this is uh this is the way the visual way of understanding it now let's go in more detail i bring this my poor point with me all the time so let's see and can i get rid of you know the visual way of uh, you know doing a, a, a range or a sequence of course yes you can and it's a good way to practice the use of code block in the code block thing you will notice that we have to start from you know a specific point you, you can you can use it in a different way as I, I explained that before you can give it just a single number or you can make this sequence this sequence now is an actual range and you can identify that by having the start point here <clears throat> sorry the start point here as zero and the end point here as five and one as a step so let's 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 look at this and you see that we start from zero and we end up at a five and we jump each one so that's a basic range uh, as we saw in here so let's see how we can get benefit of that again in a real life scenario is if you are an architect for example and you want to program or actually reprogram the array common because this is the majority of it uh, available in uh, default rivet platform i think one of them is not available so it's a good way to understand how uh, the point work in a real life example i'm, I'm using linear as you can tell by now so in, a, in the first case where you know the overall distance between the first element and the last element that's what i mean and the gap between each element or the distance let's say between each column but you do not know how many array elements you're going to get at the end this is a good example to practice the use of range and here we're going to have to start up from zero ending up with you know let's say 10 meters and you have to you know i'm calling this an increment of a 2.5 so that's the distance between each element so if i connect this to the x see sorry i i, I think i misread this you don't know the many uh, how many uh, array element you have here sorry that's my bad and you actually know the distance between them so as you see it's a from a so it's starting from zero which is the first point ending up with 10 meters which is the end point so that's maybe this is the elevation you know now how many you know the distance between each column it's 2.5 2.5 2.5 and so on but in in the case you don't know how many column you have so eventually you're going to read them or dynamo will find that for you so this is the first case this is the again it's a, one of the steps or one of the linear array you can use the second type of it is where you actually know the overall distance and the actual amount of elements but you don't know the distance between uh, you know each two elements so let's see what we have you see here i said from a to b dotted c so that's the start that's the end and these are the steps and in this case i'm calling them incremental as a point by the way so you know where is the point will be located in here i'm calling it an interval because you don't need you don't know how much actually the distance is you said i need you know uh, you know i need the start point to be at zero the end point will be at 10 and that's what it's actually been achieved and you want to you have four jumps uh, that's one that or four four values one two three four and as you can see if i connect this to get the result of this one see that i know one two three four so you know how many elements you know that you have four columns in your elevation you know the distance between the first one and the last one but you don't know the distance between each one of them and it's roughly giving you 3.333 as the distance you know as you have the three beams here or three main distances but four main columns 
Let's have a look at the other range. Again, what actually changed the whole thing is me using the pound here, or the hashtag, whatever you want to call it. This will understand that the C here is not a real uh, jump value, but rather it's a, you know rather that it's an interval. So it knows that you need four elements, not the real number four, as an incremental uh, as an uh, as an incremental value to be added to each you know unit or to each steps or to each index out of this list. So we're not going to add zero and then four and eight, but rather we have zero and we have eight, and we are telling. Uh, Dynamo, we have another two missing elements that he has to go and find how much uh, they will be. Now, the last one in the in the array uh, type uh, range is when you have a linear array, you know the overall distance and the number of bays or the segments, but you don't know the distance between any two elements. So let's let's have a look. Let's connect this and have a look what I mean. With it, it's, I, I think this one is not existed in, if I'm not wrong, in the default uh, Revit tool array or a linear array. Now we have again a range because I have a start value and an end value, and both of them are pure uh, values. They are not, you know, you know, uh, doesn't have this, uh, you know, uh, pound before them. So, and here I'm seeing that they start up at 10. Let me just open that guy. You see, I'm starting here at zero, I'm ending at 10, so that's a real range. Now, notice that I use this, that I'm, I'm, I'm meaning that I'm not using this by its real value. It's an interval, not, not an incremental value or not an incremental thing. So now we have something different. I, I supposed to have, as I saw before, uh, I supposed to have five you know, jumps. Uh, instead, I have six. And I, I have to add one because what I'm looking here, I need to, or actually if I go an architectural example, I have a start elevation and I have the end of the elevation and I need five beams. So one, two, three, four, five beams. That's what I want. And that's the difference between previous case where you know how many columns you have. So now you need to add or to create five segments or five beams so that's one two three four five so that will create or that will actually need six intervals so inside i have to add one the user normal user will not see these he will see only those so in reality you need to add one in order to achieve this result let's have a look of the textual way of uh, you know making uh, a sequence and again, sequence where you have start and here you have an amount, this shouldn't be end, this should be amount of jumps, so amount. Okay, so you, you need 10 elements as you can see and there is two each, uh, each jump between one of, between each two elements. So what we have to do again is to have, you know, the pound here or the hashtag here, whatever you want to call it, before the second or before the end. Of the range it's 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 exactly the same sequence as the range but you have this guy here and that means it's not a range it's a sequence and this is the amount of jumps you have so if you have a look so you have zero you have ten so you can see that we have ten elements and that means this is not you know not not to tell dynamo not to use ten as a real value here to jump between but instead we have ten numbers and 2.5 here as a real clear, uh, you know, number or double that they mean that they're going to increase each 0.25. If you're going to add that to X, you're going to get the same result you get, I think, except I think here I'm using 2 instead of a 2.5. And as you can see, there's 2.5 meter between each jump. And if you count them, you will find that you have 10 elements. So, or 10, 10 points, whatever, depend on how you look at it. So that's, uh, guys, uh, enough for today. Uh, I wanted in this example to give you a real life scenario of how to use uh, the Cartesian system as points uh, in a real life example, how to make this benefit beneficial for you. I'll try in the next video to explain the 2D uh, array and also to, to show you the 3D cubical array as another example of using point. Uh, by uh, coordinate or the Cartesian system. Thank you very much for watching me. Uh, have a good day.